In this video, we're going to look at this interesting inequality that involves a trigonometric function and actually bounds it by two linear functions in the variable whose constants are really close to each other. And this holds for all x on the interval 0 to pi over 3. So before diving into this problem, I suggest actually giving it a try. And the suggestion I'm going to give is take a derivative of this function and second derivative to be able to infer something about the actual function itself and bounds on the function. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this problem. So the first thing I want to consider is this first derivative of this function. And the reason to even think about this is because the first derivative tells you something about the increasing and decreasing nature of the function itself. So if we differentiate, we get 8 cosine x and then minus twice cosine 2x by a chain rule there. So the first thing to observe that's actually interesting and involves um, what's going on over here is if we take the derivative and evaluate it at 0, we get 8 times cosine 0, which is 1, and then minus twice cosine 0, which is um, also 1. So we get 8 minus 2, which is 6. And that's one of the coefficients in our inequalities that we have involved. Now, the derivative of pi over 3 is 8 cosine pi over 3. Cosine pi over 3 is a half and minus twice cosine of 2 pi over 3 and cosine 2 pi over 3 is negative a half. So this works out to uh, 4 plus 1 which is 5. All right so this value here then is f prime at pi over 3 and this value here is f prime at 0. Okay so that's some interesting information for us. So it almost seems like we're taking these values 5 and 6 and we're integrating them to get these functions right over here. Now we could do something like that if we had some information about the nature of this function itself. Does it decrease? Does it increase? We can find that out by looking at the derivative of it, which is the second derivative of our, of our original function. That would be 8 times negative sine x minus, by a chain rule again, 4 sine 2x, but then we have a, a negative, so we get a plus here. Okay, to analyze whether or not the derivative is an increasing or decreasing function, it would be nice to factor this. We can do that by changing this to a 2 sine x cosine x, so this 4 becomes an 8, so we get 8 sine x cosine x here and so that gives us uh, negative 8 times sine x as a common factor and then a 1 minus cosine x. All right in this interval here sine of x is non-negative and cosine x is non-negative as well um, and since cosine x is bounded above by 1 this quantity here is going to be non-negative. So we have a non-negative value, a non-negative value, and we're multiplying by negative 8. That means the second derivative is less than or equal to 0. So the second derivative is non-positive, which means the first derivative is weakly decreasing. Okay, so what this means then is if we pick any y in the interval 0 to pi over 3, then f prime of y sits sandwiched in between f prime of 0 and f prime of pi over 3 because the second derivative, the derivative of this, is actually a non-positive number. Okay, great. So how can we use that to our advantage, figuring out a relationship between these values and f? Well, if we look at this function here, this this number here is a 5, this number here is a 6. This function, the upper bound, is the integral of this thing. And the lower bound is the integral of this thing, both from 0 to the specific value x that we choose. And this is integrating dx. Okay, so because of this, and because of the fact that our functions, the derivative has this monotonicity um, going downward, 
and we're integrating from zero to a positive number because x is in this interval here, we get that these two quantities um, bound the integral from zero to x of f prime of y. Okay, so this here is actually our upper bound, 6x. The integral from 0 to x of 6, dx is 6x. And our lower bound here, similarly, is 5x. And the question is, what's in the middle? Well, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is f of x minus f of 0. And f of 0 is 8 sine 0 minus sine 0, which is 0. So this is actually f of x itself. And so here we get the inequality that we wanted in the first place. So I think this is a really cool problem. I think the reason I like it a lot is because it really takes this weird looking inequality and uses the full power of calculus to analyze what's going on with the functions in order to establish the inequality with a combination of derivatives and then integrals to relate directly to the function itself. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. If you have any sort of curiosities about this, leave comments below and definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so.